Hello everyone. This video is presented for the MA students of Igno. In continuation with the last two presentations, uh, we are entering into unit one of your curriculum. It's on cognitive psychology. I think the most important uh, uh, benefit of human being, the homo sapiens, is his ability to think, to interpret, to imagine, and the higher mental functions when compared to sub the subhuman beings. Cognitive psychology deals with all these uh, aspects of human thinking. And in our unit here, you have to see four or five major aspects. For the first one is the domains of cognitive psychology. The second aspect in your curriculum is the history of the development of cognitive psychology. And the third is the major issues in cognitive psychology. And of course, the fourth one is the research uh, methods and issues in cognitive psychology. So we'll start one by one within the constraints of time. The first domains of cognitive psychology starts from information processing to the artificial intelligence. Information processing itself can be subdivided into sensation to problem solving. The sensation is the starting point of every cognitive process. We know senses are regarded as the gateways of knowledge. The visual, the auditory, olfactory, gustatory, tactile sense, and I would add kinetic sense, the movement, through movements also, we learn a great lot of things from the uh, nature, from our environment, from the world outside. So, these are the gateways of knowledge. Senses, when meaning are attributed to sensory experiences, we call it perception. Mathematically speaking, sensation plus meaning is equal to perception. I'll give an example and make it clear. A two or two and a half year old baby in your car in a traffic junction is just sensing the colors, signal colors. The child Perceive, doesn't perceive it. The child sees red, yellow, green likewise and enjoys it sometimes. It's only sensory experience because the eye gets the stimulation and the sensory nerves from the eye is transmitting this experience to the occipital region of the brain then sent it to the sensory area of the brain altogether sensation is going on. But you are perceiving it because you attribute meaning to it. You interpret the sensory experience and you are perceiving it. You can find other experiences like this. So perception means meaningful uh, sensory experiences. And then sen in the sense the experiences, the perceptual experiences are when perceptual experiences are uh, generalized, we call it concepts. Concepts are the abstracted form, the generalized form of innumerable perceptual experiences. See, I will give you an example. You and I have a co concept of a dog or a vegetable, when I even we say vegetable, or we categorize so many things and bring it under this label, vegetables. 
In the case of dogs, imagine that a small child has a pet dog, which is a black Pomeranian key. Mother is saying dog, dog. The child perceives the dog, right? Then he happens to see a white Pomeranian. And again, mother says dog. A Dalmatian with a spotted fur. Yeah, dog. Then a German Shepherd, dog. So he is abstracting the common attributes. We call it criterial attributes. Criterial attributes of these different perceptual experiences make the concepts. This is a mental process, a gift to the human being for categorizing the input information in the brain. So, the next sensory, perceptual, conceptual experiences, then the next major domain in this cognitive psychology is memory. Memory, we call it retention. It has many sub-functions. Our experiences once gained are retained for various purposes, future purposes. Our hippocampus and brain, many other areas of the brain are responsible for this process. Uh, we cannot enter to these meticulous details in a short presentation like this. But still, we have to think that we have to be aware that these processes are going on. In memory, we have such classifications. We have recognition memory, recall memory, reintegrative memory. A recognition means from a group of stimuli, we are recognizing the specific stimulus. Say, for example, in examinations, you can see find the correct answer for the brackets or match A column with the appropriate uh, choices from the B column. Likewise, you will find it. this involves recognition memory. Recall memory means the readily mechanical recalling. So if I ask you your date of birth, you need not think, you are automatically giving the answer. Record. If I ask you the name of our first uh, Prime Minister of India, uh, you have a rec recall memory. Reintegrative memory is uh, cue dependent memory. The best example is when Dushanta happened to see the uh, king that king uh, is a ring which was lost from, by Shabutala. He could vividly recall all the various aspects of his previous experience, which normally he could not remember. This is called a reintegrative memory. Okay, memory is another. How do we remember? There are several theories, uh, starting from uh, disuse theory, memory traces are vanishing, and interference theory is there, retroactive inhibition, proactive inhibition, etc. And even repression is a theory uh, associated with memory. So memory is another. The next one is the developmental aspect of cognition. And there is an excellent theory called the psychogenetic epistemology uh, proposed by uh, Dean Piaget, the Swiss psychologist. And he believes that it's a maturational process intellectual functions, cognitive functions uh, are the result of a maturational process. It is a genetic theory. The information processing, you know, epistemology means theory of knowledge. Psychogenetic epistemology, genetic theory is an evolutionary theory. The psychological process through an evolutionary theory enables us to a process information. This is how the name is made meaningful, psychogenetic epistemology. This, uh, Piaget believed that there are four stages in the development of 
cognition, sensory motor stage, pre-operational period, concrete operational period, formal operational period. So the details we cannot go now. Okay? It's only during the formal operational period after adolescence, after about that age, many people get the ability for higher cognitive functions like abstract thinking, probability thinking, hypothetical detective thinking, etc. A child cannot be expected to think like an adult. Okay, the next area associated with this is the linguistic development. This is also coming under the domain of cognitive psychology. The linguistic aspect. And how do we develop language from simple babbling of the baby to the higher compound and complex sentences, symbolic manipulations? Artificial intelligence is, of course, the culmination of our researches in. Uh, intellectual functions. There are so many theories of intelligence we, we, you will have to be familiar with. Them. So many theories. Uh, I'm not going to the details of those theories. Uh, in artificial intelligence is of course the latest trend in understanding human thinking and substituting some mechanical devices to uh, human uh, beings thinking. And these are the major domains in cognitive psychology. Next, we have to think about the history, the next aspect, history of cognitive development. The history starts from the early psychologists like uh, German psychologists, Gestalt psychology. They were the pioneers in conducting some experimental studies in cognitive functions of human beings. Their approach was MOLA as against the molecular approach of the behaviors. The human being is influenced by the holistic perceptions. Holistic perception is essential for problem solving. They believed. Where they were Kohler and Kofka, these three psychologists. We have another theory, field theory. Uh, we have seen, made a mention about it in our last presentation. Uh, we have, of course, several theories associated with uh, uh, this early cognitive psychology. Tolman's theory, the sign gestalt theory it is called. And of course, when coming to the present age, we have neural researches, neurobiological processes, processes in the brain chemicals that govern our thinking, our ability to abstract thinking, etc. So, that is the history of, in very brief, in the nutshell, this is the history of cognitive psychology. Next, we have some issues in cognitive psychology. The nature nurse, nurture issue, uh, crystal intelligence, fluid intelligence likewise, uh, the processes inherent in the thinking, thinking uh, this uh, phenomenon. Uh, we have so many such subsections to be uh, discussed under the issues in cognitive psychology. About the research issues, we will have to depend upon the self-reports, the responses of the subjects to the questionnaires. Several questionnaires are there. Even for measuring intellectual processes, we have standardized tests of intelligence. Self-reports, how the individual perceives things. Uh, so, we will have to incorporate this also. Another issue is the empirical aspects. We are not for guesswork. Cognitive psychology also seeks empirical evidences for any statement made by the researchers. 
the evolution of intelligence, the function of neurons in, in, in making our memory sharper uh, and how the process of memory is associated with our neural functions. These are all the issues coming under uh, this uh, cognitive psychology. The last aspect we want to discuss today is the research methods in cognitive psychology. In any branch of psychology for that matter, we have two types of research methods broadly classified. We call it uh, cross-sectional method and longitudinal method. Cross-sectional method is sampling method. We take a cross-section of the society, a representative sample, and conduct our study based on that sample, and generalize our findings to the entire population. Contrary to that, longitudinal study is a case study method, starting from the origin of the case to the present status of the case. So it's time-consuming process. Psychology, both these processes are relevant and uh, studies have been conducted uh, using this, both, both these uh, methods. We have so many methods, especially brain-based researches, uh, experimental researches, uh, neurobiological researches, the structure and process uh, related researches. The brain structure, different parts of the brain, how the part, these parts are associated with the cognition. Researches are going in, on in, this, in that area. So in our next presentation, we will see in detail some of the aspects of cognitive psychology like gestalt psychology, and uh, Piaget's psychology. Uh, for the time being, we will have to stop. Thank you very much for patient listening. I expect your feedback.